Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our uh, today's workshop, uh, which is going to be about uh, tips for designing uh, essays exam, provided by Dr. Muhammad Mansour. So let me introduce Dr. Muhammad. Dr. Man Muhammad is an EFL researcher and practitioner with 17 years of experience of teaching students from various nationalities. Uh, his research interests include teacher education, EFL curriculum, and educational technology. So, Dr. Mansour, the floor is yours. You may start now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Basim. And thank you for all who have joined so far. And uh, welcome to the session. Um, okay, so as uh, you can see, the topic for today's presentation is tips for designing essay exam, exams or exam questions, actually. Uh, this is for, you know, this topic is particularly for faculty, like uh, the teachers or instructors who are involved in assessment or who are into designing uh, essay exams or essay questions. So it will be quite fruitful for them. So we will look into various issues in this uh, presentation. Uh, I have divided this presentation into two parts. In first part, uh, I will discuss some theoretical issues related to essay type exams, exam items or exam questions. And then I'll uh, look into various tips and strategies in part two uh, that can help us to design better and effective essay exam questions. So uh, in first part, we will look at the, the definition. The, I mean, the definition I like the best uh, that uh, can give us quite uh, deep insights into essay exam that uh, what is it? and uh, what we try to assess in this particular essay exam. And, uh, and then we will also look into why uh, do we use essay exam questions and then what can be the rationale behind that. We will also look at some advantages, disadvantages and uh, some misconceptions related to essay exam questions. And uh, the last would be, when should we use these essay exam questions? In what situations they can be effective? So this is uh, part one. And in part two, uh, we will look at some tips for writing good essay exam uh, items or questions. And then uh, we will also look at a checklist uh, that can be helpful for uh, uh, us as teachers and examiners to uh, take care of important things that can help us to design or write essay exam questions. So this is the outline. So moving ahead and uh, looking at the first part, so we will look at the definition first of all, that uh, what do we mean by an essay exam or essay exam question? So this is a very comprehensive uh, definition. It's a bit old, but still relevant and still frequently quoted in various uh, places. So it says that uh, basically it's a kind of uh, test item or exam which requires a response. Now here one, one thing that is highlighted is that uh, uh, in these type of uh, exams or test items, we want uh, the testees or examinees to uh, come up with a response that is composed or written by the examinees, usually in the form of one or more sentences. So it means that it will be a longer response and uh, you know, minimum it can be a couple of sentences maybe depending on the situation where we are trying to assess a particular, um, you know, language item or any particular skill uh, and of a nature that no single response or pattern of responses can be listed as correct. 
Now, this is basically uh, what makes it uh, quite, um, you know, flexible in positive or in negative ways. We will look in the coming slides also that uh, not a single uh, response can be listed as, as correct. I will uh, discuss that in detail in the next uh, upcoming slides. And the accuracy and, and quality of which can be judged subjectively. So word subjectively is uh, very pertinent uh, as well because uh, um, I mean, when the teachers, uh, different teachers or even the same teacher looks into this response. So every, it, it is possible that every time uh, the perception of that response might be different. So only one skilled or informed in the subject. So that is basically uh, a qualified teacher who has uh, deep understanding of the rubric and uh, the language and the task type can uh, usually judge that. So this is a broader definition. So we will uh, now see that why essay questions, that why should we use essay questions then essay items challenge students to create a response rather than simply select a response. Now, if you see in comparison to other um, essay and you know, other exam items like MCQs, multiple choice questions, where students, they are supposed to choose a right answer, but here uh, we uh, put students in, in a challenging situation to create a response so that they can, uh, in, you know, uh, bring up their own personal understanding of the topic along with the language. So this is quite a challenging task for students. So that's why it can be good when you want to challenge your students and you want them to uh, you know, show or display their full potential. Essays have the potential to reveal students' abilities to reason, create, analyze, synthesize, and evaluate. Now, these are very important critical skills that, uh, and that we, we want to assess while our students, they are engaged in critical thinking. So uh, for that, uh, it uh, really assesses or, uh, you know, put into practice their reasoning skills, the, uh, the, the way they create a response and they analyze a particular problem and they synthesize where they can draw conclusions based on various, you know, the reasonings they are providing with examples and facts. And then they also evaluate uh, their, you know, the arguments they are presenting. So, so many critical thinking skills are analyzed. So that's why um, essay exam questions can be quite effective in, in critical thinking uh, skills when we want to teach these skills. Like in the context of ELI, we already have uh, a lot of uh, you know, portion in our, um, particularly the Alice uh, curriculum, we, a lot of thinking skills is involved in um, the course that we are using that is uh, in Unlock. So Unlock contains a lot of critical thinking. So this is quite suitable in that situation. So regarding advantages, we will look at some advantages of using as a exams so they, they they assess higher order of critical thinking skills as we have just talked about and uh, these higher order skills are very important for students to improve their intellectual abilities and to stretch their language also so this is uh, where as exam questions are quite helpful evaluate student thinking and reasoning. So this is very important because uh, language learning and then the thinking process, thinking in a particular language and then providing reasoning in a target language are uh, basically 
uh, makes a particular learner and uh, efficient user of the language also. So this is very important to evaluate certain, you know, these thinking and reasoning skills. It also provides authentic experience. Authentic experience uh, means that when students, they compose their response. So they you know, try to display the best of their language in their response. And uh, this is quite authentic in a way that they are not pretending, rather they are creating uh, that response with the best of their linguistic abilities. Students less likely to guess. So this is um, uh, one of the uh, advantages, but at the same time, there's a lot of criticism on this idea. We will discuss in disadvantages as well. Uh, but usually students are less likely to guess that what they are gonna write uh, on a particular topic or what would be the problem they are going to discuss and they are going to suggest solutions. It depends on the task types. So, uh, so this is uh, one of the advantages at the same time, it can be a disadvantage we will see in future. So it's easy to construct uh, as compared to multiple choice questions, uh, you know, comparatively, it's easy to construct because uh, here uh, we will see uh, some you know, tips and strategies. So you can see that it's not that difficult to construct as compared to the multiple choice questions or other different you know, assessment items. So uh, comparatively, it's easier stimulates more study. So that's, that's very pertinent because uh, students need to come up with more reasoning, more uh, facts, examples, explanations for uh, supporting their arguments. So it really stimulates more study. Students, they have to read more, they have to understand uh, the areas they are exploring or themes they are studying in depth so that they can, when they sit to write, so they can have sufficient number of ideas. Allow students to demonstrate ability to organize knowledge, uh, express opinion and show originality. And this is what we see when students, they, they are taught how to write an essay, uh, particularly in the LI context where students, they learn how to organize knowledge. Organized knowledge means all the essays, they have some a pertinent internal inherent structure that they have to understand and they have to put the information according to uh, that particular order. And uh, then they also learn how to express their opinion. I mean, this is very important skill where students, they uh, learn that uh, expressing opinion and uh, um, I mean, op uh, what is the difference between expressing opinions and expressing or stating facts? So this distinction is very critical when they are learning how to write essays. And uh, obviously, uh, originality is the outcome of all uh, this effort. So we, we also see that essays require more effort and deeper understanding on the part of the student as uh, we have just discussed that they need to go deep into the topic or the theme they are studying because when they sit to write, they need uh, plenty of ideas to support their arguments. So when they go deep into the themes or topics, then they are in a better position to write on. Um, they can also assess the complexity of students' thought processes. So this is uh, what we were discussing that uh, thinking, critical thinking uh, is uh, involved effectively in this, in this kind of uh, exams and then their ability to think critically and solve problems in a particular domain of knowledge. So this is basically higher form of uh, you know, language learning and language production where we are involved and then essays, they, they really uh, you know, test students' ability. How do they think critically and how do they express their thoughts in that in particular domains? 
uh, as compared to multiple choice or fill in the blank items, they may not be able to assess uh, these skills in, in that depth. Essays also require students to express their thoughts in grammatically well-crafted sentences and paragraphs. So another level of uh, skill set that students needs to, uh, you know, to master that they should know how to write good grammatical sentences and then how to put sentences in paragraphs, how to structure those paragraphs and then how to structure the whole essay. So this is, uh, uh, you know, kind of mastery they acquire with the passage of time. And uh, so essays are not just uh, uh, a linear process. It involves multiple uh, multi-layered processes that are going on at the same time. Students are learning at multiple levels when they are preparing for essays. Now let's look at some disadvantages that are also involved in uh, essays. So let's look at uh, can't limit amount of material tested. So this is basically a first drawback or we can say limitation of essay exam is that uh, we can't test a vast variety of material. Obviously when we are uh, testing uh, through essay exams, we need to uh, keep the material short so that uh, students can uh, well, prepare that material in an effective way. So here, uh, uh, the testing is more uh, in, hor in, in, you know, a vertical direction as compared to horizontal because uh, we can't... Uh, la, la, la. Sorry? Is there any question? Okay, so it can uh, also, another disadvantage could be, it can decrease validity. Validity is that uh, the amount of, uh, the measure of a test that uh, to what extent it can uh, test the amount of uh, content that is there. So that is one of the, you know, objections on uh, this kind of testing that is not, uh, uh, validity is at stake sometimes. It's quite subjective. So that is where it's, um, yeah, the, the point coming next will also link with that. It's quite subjective. Subjective mean um, an instructor or a teacher uh, uh, who is reading the same script first time might have a different understanding when the person is reading the same script second time or even, uh, you know, if there is uh, a time, uh, you know, span uh, different while reading, you know, the same script. So it can make the perception different for, for the teacher or and sometimes uh, the same script read, read by different teachers might come up with different uh, understanding. So this is basically what makes it uh, sometimes controversial also because it's quite subjective so uh, that's why you know the rubrics they are also criticized because they can't give the concrete uh, uh, you know reliable answers for teachers to assess uh, essay exams potentially unreliable scoring this is linked with subjectivity of the essays also uh, sometimes uh, teachers, they create their perceptions of the scripts by looking at the handwriting legibility. I mean, sometimes it also, uh, I mean, hinder uh, the potential understanding of the script and uh, uh, some teachers may, uh, you know, may not be able to fully acknowledge uh, the ideas expressed in that particular response uh, based on the handwriting. Sometimes even ink color can contribute in, um, you know, unreliable scoring because some, you know, teachers may not, uh, you know, uh, may not uh, find a particular color, uh, you know, reasonable to read or may find it, uh, you know, not suitable for writing. So 
I mean, there is quite uh, research behind that where teachers, they have really highlighted this. Teacher expectations regarding the quality of students' work and also a uh, problem because uh, what teachers are expecting and what student is producing uh, can be uh, at the different levels and it can create uh, uh, unreliable scoring as well. Sometimes while teachers, they are uh, grading these responses. So they also see that uh, certain students, those who have written really well, uh, then those who couldn't do well, then they are compared. And this relative marking also becomes a source of unreliable scoring. Stereotypes associated with students' gender or ethnicity if, uh, uh, can also contribute in the unreliable uh, you know, scoring. So it depends on uh, different context, can have different uh, issues related to gender and ethnicity as well. So graders' personal feelings towards student may influence as a scoring. So it depends if uh, the, you know, the grader knows a student or uh, you know, already uh, well acquainted with the people he, he or she is uh, scoring. So this can also influence uh, essay questions. So these are some of the, it also time consuming to score unless good rubric is designed. So that's why, because um, sometimes it happens that if rubric is not very well designed, it's not uh, fully developed, then in that case, it can be time consuming for teachers to put the certain categories in different, uh, you know, uh, mark domains. So it becomes quite tough for teachers also. So essay exams, uh, as we have just seen, uh, can be unreliable because they tend to be relatively poor agreement among graders, in, as I just said score assigned to an essay, or sometimes even individual graders are often inconsistent in scoring uh, in two different readings. Uh, there are empirical studies on reliability, both consensus, numerical agreement or correlation, they can be compromised. So these studies can be seen here. So then different graders uh, often cannot agree on what score a, a given essay should receive. So this is what makes it unreliable uh, to some extent, and uh, it becomes difficult for even graders to agree on a particular score. Essay type questions can promote bad writing habits. This is very important point that, uh, that can be discussed in terms of its limitations. Why um, bad writing habits? Because good writing habits uh, require a process in which uh, students or learners, they are involved. Uh, these uh, good handwriting habits involve brainstorming where they collect ideas, idea generation, and then it comes uh, into the writing part. And then there comes a feedback part peer feedback or self, uh, uh, you know, feedback or uh, teacher feedback, and then rewriting the draft. So this process uh, is where, you know, good writing habits, they develop because students then they start working on different skill sets. But in essay exam, students, they go for one shot exam and uh, where a lot of uh, things happen in, in a time uh, constraint uh, issues. So teacher peer feedback and self-correction or self-reflection is very critical in good uh, writing habit um, habits. So this is not uh, assessed in that particular context. Misconceptions we can see And uh, some misconceptions are essay questions are always better than multiple choice questions uh, when uh, assessing higher order thinking skills. So this is uh, one of the misconceptions, but in some situations, depending on the context, that multiple choice questions can be uh, a better way to assess higher order skills as well. So uh, one thing is uh, there that we need to understand the rationale for assessing a particular 
you know, why we are using a particular uh, exam item. And uh, in that situation, we need to have a very strong rationale for assessing a particular skill or a particular kind of uh, uh, linguistic or uh, skill set that we are interested in. Providing students space to write more does not automatically mean that higher order thinking is being tested and evaluated. So this is uh, uh, another misconception that when students they write more, so it means they are uh, expressing their higher order thinking skills. Now, again, so we, we need to understand why we are using essay questions in, in the first place. So this is a very pertinent question that uh, needs to be addressed in the beginning. Uh, and we were saying that essay questions eliminate guessing, but uh, there is another kind of guessing that is called blung in uh, a research. Blung is that when students, uh, without understanding the real problem or real issue, they are uh, fake writing. They are just making up things without understanding in uh, in depth the issue or the problem that is being highlighted in that. So this kind of writing can uh, be another type of blunt. So sometimes students, they learn one type of essay and they just use same type of structure in various uh, essay types. So this is uh, one of the issues that, that came up in research also. Uh, essays develop writing skills. We have just seen that they can uh, promote bad writing uh, habits also. So this is, uh, essay questions are not essays, actually. Essays go through a process of drafting, editing, and revision. So this is uh, what makes a good writing, where different uh, stages students, they get feedback on how they are performing. And based on that feedback, they uh, develop, improve their writing, because like any skill, writing is also a skill. So skill needs feedback. So without a proper feedback, so it's, it's very hard to say that people are developing a particular kind of skill. When should we use uh, these type of questions? So these are primarily two broader, you know, uh, contexts to assess students' understanding of subject matter content. Subject matter content mean uh, if we are teaching students a particular theme uh, or a particular topic, and we want to assess students' understanding on that topic. So in that situation, it could be a good uh, uh, assessment tool that we can use to assess students' ability to reason with their knowledge of subjects. So this is reasoning, Thinking, uh, these are two important skills that uh, when we are, we are really interested in uh, you know, understanding students' uh, uh, thinking skills or reasoning skills. So that can be uh, an effective way to assess these. Now here uh, we will look at some tips for writing good essay uh, items. So these tips are uh, quite uh, effective if we look into, so one by one we will look into uh, these different tips. Provide a reasonable, it's very important for the instructors or teachers who are developing these as exam items that they should provide reasonable time limit for thinking and writing. So this is, uh, these are some of the fundamentals that are important when we are developing writing exam questions. Uh, so uh, what do we mean by uh, time restriction for time restriction is important because uh, this is how we can force or push students to uh, apply or display their skills, the skills they have learned how to write effective essays so, so that they can spend enough time on thinking, brainstorming, and then writing. So this is the first thing. Avoid letting students answer a choice of questions. So um, usually it is recommended that there, there shouldn't be any choice between questions when students are going to attempt an essay because 
choice can um, uh, force students to uh, waste a lot of time in selecting and choosing and then deciding because in in that situation it it is uh, quite difficult for students to focus on one thing so that's why it's better to uh, come up with one uh, broader question that can help them to focus and then uh, and collect ideas later to that give definitive tasks to students it's very important that they should have a very specific definitive task because if the task is not definitive it can uh, uh, create a lot of confusion and problems then for example uh, ask them to compare analyze evaluate etc so these verbs we will see they have a very critical role to play and consider defining what those terms mean to you so this needs to be done during the teaching phase when students are being taught that they should know they should understand what do uh, we as teachers mean by these different uh, important words that come in the instruction instruction part of the essay so in that situation so they, they they should understand the meaning of these words we use checklist point system to score with a model answer uh, checklist point system means there should be a rubric that uh, should have different uh, categories and different grades for different uh, sub skills for example students they write outline determine how many points to assign to each part uh, if they write a proper introductions and then they'll get separate grades for body paragraphs there should be separate grades for conclusion there should be separate grades so this is how students can um, Uh, departmentalize uh, in their minds that uh, by writing different uh, parts in a particular order they they will get or they will achieve different grades so this is how we can teach our students to uh, structure uh, their understanding for writing exams in a particular manner score one question at a time all at the same time uh now this is uh, for grading uh, uh point when we are going to grade those responses so score one question at a time and all at the same time it means that if there are multiple questions that students they have attempted then it's better to score one question at a time so that we can see on a linear scale that what would be uh, how is the response Uh, coming up and uh, what can uh, how can we compare and contrast the responses from one student to another so this is uh, uh, related to it was related to grading determine whether an essay question is uh, most appropriate format uh, for the type of learning you want to assess another important point because this is what we have discussed earlier that uh, these are the fundamentals that uh, what we are going to assess so is it really uh, the suitable uh, link, you know assessment tool uh, that we are going to use or it can uh, some other alternatives can be better tools for assessing that uh, type of learning uh, so it's important to avoid ambiguous prompts prompts are very crucial because um, sometimes students when they fail to understand a prompt or the language used in a particular prompt if it is uh, beyond the their understanding then it can cause a lot of confusion and problem and the response might not be directly linked to the response uh, that was expected state the question clearly and precisely and make clear what information the answer should contain so uh, usually we see that uh, the essay type questions contain two type of two parts one part is uh, usually uh, that is the problem or the statement and the second is the instruction part where we ask student to do something so these both should be very clear and there should be a clear information that what we are expecting 
And it's important to specify allocated time and the length of an essay question. So this is another important feature that the time, for example, will it be 60 minutes or 70 minutes? And the length will be the number of words that are required in that particular essay, 250 or 300 or in between that. It depends that uh, context as specific it can be. So these, these are important ingredients or features that should be there while we are designing. So the important part would be start with considering students learning outcomes. So this SLOs are very important when we are going to design essay exam questions. Uh, if we look at these SLOs, uh, this is example A, student can write a four paragraph essay on an invention. Now this is an SLO, it's very generic, it's very broad, it's, uh, it, it's not specifying what do we want students to do. So look at this example B, student can write a four paragraph exploratory essay by comparing and contrasting advantages and disadvantages and important invention. Now in this particular SLO, more details are included. Now, when we put this SLO into a question, so then we can be in a better position to design an essay question that uh, can assess students understanding. And because here we are specifying so many things that are very critical in designing effective question, uh, essay exam questions. So if we look at here, uh, clearly define the task and situate the task in a problem situation. Now uh, look at this example here. Intended learning outcome is analyze the impact of this. This is, uh, uh, I mean, not English specific example analyze the impact of America at war on American economy. So analyze word is highlighted. Less effective as a question can be this, describe the impact of America at war on American economy. Now describe is less effective. Look at this more effective way, one of the ways to make it more effective. Analyze the impact of America at war on American economy by describing how different effects of the war work together to influence the economy. Now, here we have elaborated the task and we have also specified the word analyze and uh, what they are supposed to analyze we have highlighted here. So this is uh, very important when students, they get a, you know, uh, essay exam item, it should be specific, it should uh, be very clear, and then it should delimit the scope of the task. Because if the task is very generic, very broad, then students can take any direction. And uh, what we are interested in assessing we might miss that. So it's important to delimit the task and clearly develop the problem or problem situation. It's very important. Uh, and uh, it's also important to limit subject matter that we need to create boundaries. Uh, the, the way we have just seen in this example where we have just created boundaries by uh, uh, highlighting specific words. And we will also see that uh, how to create boundaries in, in these points that we are going to see. Use verbs carefully and selectively because uh, verbs play a very crucial role in writing exam questions. Make sure the verb interact with the object of the verb task. Task words, we call them. Task words are these that we will discuss now. Not all verbs are same. Be mindful of what, what you want your students to do. So lo let's look at some examples here. So when, when I was uh, talking about task words, so these are the task verbs or words, analyze. So what I've done is that I have taken the you know, meaning. What do we mean when we say analyze? Break into separate parts, discuss, examine, or interpret each part. This is what we mean by analyze, compare, examine two or more things. 
So identify similarities and differences. Comparisons generally ask for similarities more than differences. So contrast is different. Show differences set in opposition. So sometimes we ask students to compare and contrast. So we are asking them to do both the things. So criticize, make judgments. Now evaluate comparative worth. Criticism on involve analysis. So I mean, mostly this word criticize is uh, misunderstood uh, and generally. So it's important for teachers in class when they're teaching. If task required uh, some something to be criticized, then they should know what do we mean by criticize. Define is quite uh, general, but give the meaning, usually a meaning specific to the course of subject and uh, determine the precise limits of the term to be defined. So this is very important. So look at some more verbs, describe, give detailed account, make a picture with words. Now this is very important when we say describe something. Now, uh, it means that when we are asking students to describe something, we may be interested in uh, assessing their understanding of the adjectives they have studied because uh, they will be more into uh, giving the pictorial details of that particular thing. List characteristics, qualities and parts, discuss, consider and debate or argue. Discuss is very important word. Uh, but it, 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 it generally is also misunderstood because it's quite the broader meaning we take are maybe different than what we actually wanted students to write on. Consider and debate or argue the pros and cons of an issue, write about um, any conflict. So this is again compare and contrast also comes in discuss. Enumerate is list several ideas, aspects, events, things, qualities, reasons, etc. Word evaluate is very important. Here, when you we ask students to evaluate, we ask them to give their opinion or cite the opinion of an expert. So in evaluation, we are also interested in uh, opinions along with evidence to, uh, to support that evaluation. And uh, let's look at uh, these are the verbs. You can also see illustrate, interpret, outline, prove, state, summarize, trace. These are very key words uh, that we use in designing uh, the essay exam questions. So they are usually, uh, we should know the meaning of these and our students should also know the meaning of these verbs. Now, sometimes these uh, uh, task words uh, can come in different, uh, uh, you know, assessment item types also, like objective items, like MCQs or fill in the blanks. They may ask, uh, you know, or putting things in different uh, uh, categories, classify, identify, match, recall, recognize. So these uh, task words usually uh, are commonly used in objective items like MCQs or fill in the blanks. So, uh, but look at these, they, they can be used objective or essay both, analyze, apply, compare, infer, interpret and predict. And essay questions are mostly, these are the words that are commonly used, compose, defend, develop, evaluate, explain, justify and propose. So this is very really important understanding in, in uh, regarding designing essay type questions that what do we mean by these task words. Moving ahead and then understanding uh, limitations of writing in time-based assessment. This is for uh, teachers and for policy makers uh, because uh, limitations of writing in time-based assessment. What can be the limitations of writing when we are oppressed uh, in time and we are under a certain uh, time constraints when we are uh, writing? Limitations can be that um, uh, I'm in the sentence, the quality of sentence structures might not be up to the mark that we are expecting. 
uh, there can be a lot of issues in punctuation and the mechanics of the writing. Uh, there can be uh, issues related to the, the way ideas are put forward. So these limitations should be kept in mind that we usually ignore. Uh, why? Because uh, we set a very high standard for, uh, you know, we expect a high standard uh, you know, essay responses from our students, but these limitations are quite real and uh, they needs to be considered if you have the, I mean, um, have the capacity to highlight these limitations so that the rubric when it is uh, designed, so these limitations could also be accommodated accordingly. Promote feedback and training. This is very important that uh, if uh, students, if it is possible, students when they are writing an exam, if uh, uh, if it you know the situation permits, they should be given feedback, and then based on that feedback, students should get further training. Uh, uh, the idea is that uh, essay exams should be uh, a part of good writing habits so that, uh, I mean, it, there should be a chain uh, connection between the, it shouldn't be a one shot uh, item assessment, it should uh, be a continued um, uh, training sessions for students. Be clear about the criteria for upgrading. And uh, this is very important that students should be aware of it. So uh, what we have seen in different contexts that students are, uh, uh, the, the technical jargon used in the, you know, these rubrics or grading criteria, students, they uh, really find it um, possible to understand that what do we expect from them? So uh, I think it would be a good idea if they are given the rubrics in their L1 as well, so that they should understand uh, what they are expected and what skill set is required from them. Okay, now here, uh, when we talk about uh, presenting a reasonable task to students, so there can be uh, two ways to present the task. Uh, either we can put the essay question in the statement form, it could be a statement or it can be a question. Now let's look at both the uh, you know, forms here in this example. How are the processes of increasing production and improving quality in a manufacturing plant, similar or different based on cost? So this is just an example. And uh, if you look at the imperative statement, compare and contrast. So we are uh, basically, we can design as exam in the form of a question where we can bring these task words um, and uh, ask students to write and then or we can put it in imperative form where we can put the task words in the beginning and it can become an imperative statement in both ways it's okay. Uh, but the idea still is there that it should be very clear. Specify the relative point value and the approximate time limit in clear relative point value is already discussed earlier that uh, for writing introduction, how many points and then for writing body paragraphs, how many points and then the time and the clear directions. Clear directions mean what do you want your students to do? Uh, should they analyze, should they evaluate, should they discuss or should, I mean, what is specifically we want from our students. And then uh, criteria we have already talked about. Uh, if you, we are using several relatively short essay questions rather than one long one, then uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a better idea because uh, in this way students might uh, express their linguistic abilities in a better way as compared to one long essay where they might uh, need to stretch for, uh, you know, collecting, generating ideas. So if they already have a lot of ideas, then they can express probabilities there that they can express their language skills in a better way. Uh, optional questions we have discussed, uh, there is no need. 
so this is um, a very important that essay question should be uh, should go through a review process because if we are not putting it in review process so they might uh, have certain issues that can uh, really affect the exam type so how should this process should work so there should be preview before uh, i mean when we uh, uh, when we have designed an essay question now we should predict students response like can we guess that what would be the responses students might come up uh, i mean will they really hitting and the exact target words that we are interested in and we might uh, by writing a model answer for ourselves as an instructors or designers we can write a model answer and uh, and then we can also share for feedback from our knowledgeable colleagues to critically review the essay question that we have designed and also the model answer and intended learning outcomes for alignment so all these things should be uh, uh, you know at sync with each other the learning outcomes and the task type and then the rationale behind that and then the task itself and the skill set that we are interested in assessing and then review after it's done then it's very important to review uh, that particular exam question and then we also should review student responses to the essay questions so i mean when we are reviewing we should also see how students they have responded to these essay questions so this is uh, very important so in the end we are going to see the checklist this checklist uh, is for all the instructors to see uh when we are designing writing essay exam questions so we should uh, look into these issues it would be a kind of uh, summary of this presentation and it's also the uh the last uh, you know crux of the whole presentation could the item be better assessed with different kind of assessment so why are we using essay exam question very critical is the essay question aligned with the intended learning outcome very important what is the slo we are trying to assess is the essay question too long or should rather be split into several relatively shorter essay exams or questions very important does the essay question contain a clear and delimited de task and specific problem situation so this is a uh, very critical very important that what exactly we want our students to do is the question words uh, and structured in such a way that it will be clear to students what they are expected to do so is the task presented to students reasonable reasonable mean in terms of time and the uh, uh, task difficulty level and along with the uh, the length of the task if there is a problem situation included in essay question is it novel situation now this is very important sometimes um, uh, being teachers we really set very uh, high targets for our students so uh, if we are putting a problem then this problem should not be a novel problem that they they have never heard of it should be a known problems because we are not interested in uh, uh you know their understanding of the problems uh, uh in the world rather our aim should be to assess their linguistic ability to address that problem do the students know the recommended time and that's very important do students know how many points essay is worth and different parts of it have you avoided the use of optional question yes there is there is no need to provide an optional question have you written a model answer if you have written a model answer um i personally suggest that uh, the teachers who are uh, preparing or designing for these questions they should come up with a model answer so that the other assessors who are assessing they should have that model answer um, you know in front of them as well so that they can uh, understand that uh, what type of ideas uh, i mean it's okay to welcome uh, you know different ideas from students but uh, at the same time 
model answer can provide better understanding of the task to the uh, graders as well. And uh, do you have personal knowledgeable, uh, you have a person who can feedback, provide a feedback on that, and then uh, it can be reviewed. So these are important points and these are the references that I have used. So that's uh, uh, the presentation. Now we can go for any questions you might have. Well, wonderful, Dr. Mansour, for uh, these steps and uh, suggestions for designing essay exams. So thank you so much. And thank you thank all you. for attending the workshop. So now let's open the floor for questions or uh, comments regarding the, the workshop. And again, thank you, Dr. Mansour, and thank you, thank you all for attending uh, the workshop. Yes, uh, yeah. And uh, can open your mic and ask your question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, I just have a one question, uh, Dr. Hamza, with you. Um, regarding when you mentioned that uh, the, the instructor or the professor should not ask the student to choose between questions. So I just want to know why. Because I remember while I'm doing my, you know, high uh, education, it was like mentioning that you may choose like two, like we had six essay questions and they asked us to choose four of, out of the six to answer from. Wow, I really appreciate you. You were, uh, I mean, definitely learning in a different context. And uh, actually, uh, the reason is not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, re the only reason that in literature is mentioned that uh, because students, they have limited amount of time to assess essay exam questions. So uh, it's better that they should be uh, provided one task so that they should not waste their time in selecting which one should they go for or which one they should not go for. Because when they are in such stressful situation, they might, uh, you know, start with the one and they leave in the middle and then they start the next one. So uh, according to the research, students, they can get confused and uh, it's better that uh, whatever uh, the number of, uh, you know, whatever the amount of content they have studied, so they can be assessed with one task so that they can focus on that and, and then display their skill set. So this is the main reason behind uh, that idea. Otherwise, if uh, the students are mature and if the language is not a big issue for them, then uh, there is no harm in providing them with multiple uh, you know, uh, options and they can choose which one they can express, but it depends on the level of knowledge they have in that particular um, area, because uh, the, the students that we mostly deal with, they, they have very limited amount of uh, ideas and uh, the knowledge related to those ideas. So that's why it is generally recommended that they should be asked to write on one. Yeah, I really appreciate your answer. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you now because I remember when I was in my graduate study, it was a physiology course, right. and you know, they like they give us um, four question out of six, and they I mean six question, and they ask us to choose four, and I indeed I was at the time like confusing to choose which one is easier, so I can recall the answer and you know start constructing the, or composing the answer. Yeah, yeah thank you really so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Okay, yeah, thank you, Dr. Hamza, for sharing your uh, experience in, in this topic. Uh, any other questions or comments or sharing experience? Okay, I think we have a question here in chat from uh, Dr. Omar. Are multiple choice questions better than essay questions for assessing students' higher order thinking skills? Yeah, that's very interesting and pertinent question. It's quite debated a lot in literature related to assessment as well. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very important question that has been discussed uh, quite a long time. Uh, actually, uh, there are uh, almost equal, uh, you know, weightages given to these uh, different uh, item types that we usually use in assessment that multiple choice questions can also assess higher order thinking skills because multiple choice questions uh, can uh, ask the learners to come up with, uh, with their critical thinking, with, with their reasoning and with their ability to create and come up with new ideas as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, when we uh, want them, want the students to express their originality, and when we want them to create something that are also very integral part of higher order thinking skills, uh, because the higher order thinking skills, if you see uh, the pyramid, so creating is is at the top of that so uh, in multiple choice questions this idea of creating new new things or uh, conceptualizing new things is generally is not that applicable so that's why essay exams are more uh, popular in, uh, in in asking students to provide uh, their creativity because this this creativity is um, where students they create a whole new idea in the form of an essay so that's why uh, usually it is recommended that uh, for creating or for creating skills you know essay exams should be used in assessment okay thank you Thank you, Dr. Mansour and Dr. Amar as well. Uh, we have a new question here. Do we need to write a statement about the essay before using the imperative style? Um, actually, a statement and imperative style is uh, almost the same because uh, the distinction was between a question and imperative. So. Statement comes from SLO as actually the student learning outcome provides a statement where we get the idea and then imperative or question can be two forms in which we design an essay question. So um, um, what I'm, I can understand from this question is that uh, uh, you want to uh, if you want to use an imperative style of designing essay questions, so it's up to you, it's your choice, uh, but uh, both are fine, both are great. So it depends that uh, sometimes certain task types, you know, essay exam types, they, they are more uh, worded in question form in a better way as compared to imperative uh, statements. So it depends when we are designing what suits the best. So I think both are okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Mansour and uh, Dr. Asma. Okay, so I shared again the three links. The first one is the evaluation form. So please complete the evaluation form and inshallah we will send the certificate uh, inshallah within 24 to 48 hours inshallah. And the workshop uh, will be uploaded on our YouTube channel inshallah again within 24 hours inshallah. Any other questions or comments?
All right, so it seems that there are no uh, more questions or comments. So we reach the end of today's workshops. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed Mansour. And thank you all for attending the workshop. Stay tuned, we still have one more workshop on Wednesday about uh, tips for giving feedback or for providing feedback on students writing. So we'll see you inshallah on Wednesday. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your, your evening. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for uh, you know staying and uh, attending. Thanks a lot. Thank you. God bless you all.